Hola a todos, Adán Flash Building aquí. Nosotros ahora empezamos la parte 3 de nuestra aplicación de chat en Action Script 3. Siéntate por favor y tiene cuidado de la cabeza. When we last left off in part 2, we created all the interfacing that we need in Flash and we placed in our Flash script that's going to handle all the calling to PHP that needs to occur. So now in PHP, we've created a file called chat.php because all three sections of the flash action script 3 code they call out to a, a flash uh, PHP file called chat.php so now we've created that file in Dreamweaver and let's talk about it real quick first thing we do is connect to our database and we already discussed how to sync in your database connection script or you can just put in your database connection code right here in the top of this file if you if you'd rather do that and not use a re an include file okay so part one or section one corresponds with section one in flash you'll see section one in the action script three code is right here section one so in PHP section one corresponds with that section so we pick up the posted variable of initial request which flash sends out right here so we know in the PHP file, in each section, uh, the PHP file knows which section needs to be run within it by or according to what posted variable comes from Flash. If the posted requester variable is chat check, we know to run part two in the in the PHP script here. If the requester variable is has a value of new chat, then we know to run this part of the script, part three or section three. So section one corresponds with initial chat body request. We just want to load the whole chat body into the chat window in Flash. So that's what we do. We say status line equals initial load. So that's what it'll stay, say in Flash in the status text field on stage. And then the body will be empty. We'll just create the variable, set it as empty right here. Then we create an SQL query that is selecting all from chats and ordering them by the date time in a descending order. So we run the MySQL fetch array function on that SQL query and we come up with all of these rows out of the database. So on the chat body we strip the slashes on it or else slashes may show up where you don't want them to and then we replace all of the uh, single quotes with their HTML entity and then we see, set up the body variable that's going to get sent back to flash here so what gets sent back to flash is in this line here so within the while loop we've requested all of the chats so the while loop will keep compounding each chat so if there's 1000 chats in your database all of them are going to come out in this loop and be rendered and be sent into flash to be rendered. Now this last little query here it runs to grab the last ID the one the ID with the greatest value which is to be the last one posted we want to get that stored ID or we want to get that ID out and send it into flash as the stored ID and I'll show you why we do that in a second in part two. Okay so at the end after this query this query right here this section pretty much is all set up only just to grab this stored ID that's what we want and here this loop is set up to grab all of the chats and sync them into a variable called body so here at the end of this we set up an echo statement or an echo function whatever you want to call it back to flash so you can either print or echo back to flash this data this variable called stored ID and it has a variable of this stored ID we attained right here then the status line equals status line variable which equals initial load then the return body equals body which I already told you what that is it's all of the chats compounded with everybody's username here the, the date time that the chat occurred and then the chat body now it's important to note that you can sync HTML 
custom HTML straight in there and Flash will render it out as long as the uh, text field is set to display HTML okay set to render HTML rather so that's pretty much it for section one section one just pretty much loads everything up into a compounds everything into a variable called body and gets ready to send it back to flash and before we send it back to flash we grab the stored ID which is the last ID in the database you can see this query is select ID from chats order by ID descending that means it's going to grab the last one placed and we say limit one because we only want that one and that everything gets sent back into flash so flash is holding the stored ID which is the last ID status line and the return body gets sent in that's when per the person first comes to the application that's what happens so since we connected to MySQL way up top here we can use it in all three of our sections here so let's talk about section number two now section two of our chat.php file corresponds with the section two of our ActionScript 3 code and that is the requester chat check so when flash sends out the requester chat check in section two we run all this code the status line it gets a, an initial value of not new just by default up top here and if there is a new line and we find the new line here or a new a newer ID than the stored ID then we change this variable name down below here I'll show you that so the stored ID is posted from flash remember in part one or section one we send the stored ID in so the stored ID gets posted back to the file here from flash and then we run a MySQL query to pretty much find the latest ID like we did here in this query in section one so we find the latest ID in the same method that we used up top once we have the latest ID in a variable here then we can use an if condition to compare and say if the latest ID is greater than the stored ID from flash then we render out the new data we say status line is equal to is new and flash needs that to say is new to know if it should populate new body data new chat body or a new full chat window and then uh, we set the body variable again initialize it we run our query we grab all the data out we set up our bat body variable again the way we want it and uh, any HTML that we want in there can go and then we do the same thing with the echo at the end we echo out the stored ID let us da, 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 all that stuff just like we did before up top and uh, it's important to note that you see this if condition it's nested right here its nest closes right here so you know what that means nothing will echo back to flash unless the latest ID is greater than stored ID if the latest ID is not greater than stored ID there's no reason to send anything back to flash or update anything because there's nothing new you would be wasting transmissions and whatever it's just not needed only if their latest ID is greater than the stored ID then repopulate because you know there's a new chat that all the tens of thousands of people watching your chat or even if there's six people watching your chat window all of them will see updated data without having to press refresh or anything like that okay now let's discuss section three section three corresponds with the section three in our flash action script three script and it's parsing the new chats that are submitted to this file so when the person puts in their name and then they put in their chat and they press submit this is the section that runs and uh, what we do is we grab the user IP we grab their IP address so we can run uh, IP blocking mechanisms if we want in the database every row is going to have an IP address of whoever that person was chatting so if they're really annoying and you want to block them from ever chatting again you can do that that's what that's all about and I'm not even going to write the blocking mechanism because you can just write an if else condition statement to say uh, if this is this equals this guy's annoying guy's IP address no chats are going through for this doofus 
that's how you do it. Now, uh, username is what's posted from var uh, Flash, and the chat body is also posted from Flash when they press submit. So we get the user IP, the username, and the chat body all stored up in variables here, and we run uh, a little bit of filtering to prevent SQL injection attacks before going into the database. Which there's a number of different ways you can do this, and I don't know if this is even 100% uh, solid but it seems to work for me so uh, and you can also restrict what they can type in in the flash text field I even put that in there let's see yes it's in here right here on number three section three see restrict they can only type in actually they can put everything but the ampersand and these two brackets but you can put anything you want in there to restrict or you can use this restrict method that only lets them put letters and numbers and spaces okay so back to part three alright so at the end of the filtering we run I'm gonna talk about this commented out section right here in a second we'll get right back to that alright so once the filtering is done we can then insert we run the insert SQL statement to uh, add these values down here to these fields up here these are the fields in your database table whatever's in that table that's what we want to populate so those fields in your database table that we made in part one uh, have to get these variables placed into them through this SQL query see this last one that says date time we use the now function to populate that and what it does is puts a timestamp in there for the exact time that they chatted and so what we do is we grab the latest ID to send the stored ID back to flash here of the latest ID that is the latest chat the latest chats ID so we run the MySQL ID or MySQL insert ID function to grab the ID that was made on this insert does that make sense okay good so now we go and do the body initialize the body variable again run the query grab all the data out make the body variable to send back in the flash to make a new chat window display okay here is where it gets echoed back. You echo back the latest ID, the status line, and the return body once again. And uh, this should not say now. Status line should say... We don't even need a status line for when this occurs. But we'll send it anyway. It can say poo poo. I think that'll work. Status line equals poo poo we're not even listening for it back in the flash and then we close the MySQL connection every time this file executes the connection is closed okay now the last part of this PHP control file and a very important part of the file is this delete any chat posts off the tail end this little piece of script is commented out now I'm gonna remove this here at the bottom and this here at the top to activate it now you can see it's not commented out and it's active what this will do is if I ran this right now I won't get any more than a few posts in my uh, my chat table so you have to keep this commented out like I had it there to enable the chats to build up to maybe around you know you want to build it up to about 500 or a thousand whatever you want to max limit to be of the amount of chats that could be in there um, you set it to that number by just watching your database once it gets up to 500 you see it's at 500 you uncomment this I'm gonna comment it back now it has to be commented out and not active until your database table gets up to where you want it once it gets to 1000 or whatever you enable this and it'll keep slicing one off the tail end each time a chat is made so that way your database doesn't get freaking huge and out of control with tens and thousands and maybe millions of little chats that you really don't even need in there it's all crap all you need is the, the last 500 or the last thousand the last hundred would even work okay so that's that so that completes the application and now we're gonna test it out in part four stay tuned for part four where I'm gonna test it out live online in front of everybody so no doofuses can tell me that this doesn't work